Good morning. Uh, Title VII program is pleased to present Mr. Terry Jones, uh, filmmaker, producer, uh, director, and screenwriter. Hi, Mary. Uh, thanks for bringing me in for uh, Native Heritage Month. Um, I, like all of you, I used to meander and wander through the halls here at uh, Gowanga Central. Um, when I was going to school here, I was, uh, I don't want to call it a, a bad thing. I was book smart and I was creative, so I always had those things fighting with one another. So when I uh, left Gowanda, I ended up having a life kind of more of doing uh, book smart stuff like numbers and uh, uh, corporate jobs. But four years ago, I went back to school. I went to Syracuse University for film. That was my original passion. And um, um, just like I think any, any high school student, you kind of find what language you're good at. Sometimes you're good at a lot of things. I consider sports a language. I consider uh, film. You have film language. That's what we're going to see today, two of my short films. Uh, math, science, they're all languages. It's just learning how to speak and how to communicate in those languages. So. Um, <clears throat> so I think we'll just start with um, with the first film. It's called Give and Take. Uh, it was a project that I made with um, uh, at Syracuse University. Um, it's about an anthropologist who comes to the Indian reservation to record songs for his research. And uh, along the way, uh, Haudenosaunee or Iroquois uh, woman, trickster, uh, lures him into the woods and teaches him a lesson. Uh, this film premiered last year at the LA Skins Fest, which is in Los Angeles, California. And uh, after, during the award ceremony, I was awarded along with my fellow filmmakers, um, collaborators, we won the Emerging Filmmaker Award. So you're seeing an award-winning film here. So, um, so let's start it. Great film, Terry. Ah, uh, thanks. Um, I have a few questions. Mm -hmm. Where did the idea come from for Give and Take, and how did you come up with the title for this film? Um, the original title to the film was going to be Taken, but apparently there's a very popular movie out there called Taken. Um, so we couldn't use that. Actually, I think it was my mom that came up with the idea of Give and Take. You know, you give a little, you take a little. Um, but the, the idea of the story was uh, um, the person who I made the film with is from India, the country of India. And he, there was an old Indian tale about a, a man seeking knowledge who went into, the, went into this bridge and then he ends up meeting this trickster. But I think in, the film, in that story he ends up getting killed um, seeking knowledge. But in our story we wanted to be more relatable in terms of how um, sometimes cultures are studied or sometimes overstudied, especially with Native Americans, how we feel we're overstudied. Um, when you think about what the moral of this, every movie or every story has a moral to it, and here the main, main character, the anthropologist, his main um, thing to learn is he has to take part. Um, you know, instead of studying and looking at something like, like in a fishbowl, through a fishbowl, he's, they actually just want him to put down the camera and just take part. So. Very good. So, um, so the next film, so like I said, that, last year that premiered in Los Angeles at the LA Skins Fest. Uh, this past weekend, I was back at the LA Skins Fest screening another film. Uh, that one is called Soup for My Brother. And that film, um, which I'm going to see now, both of these films, actually, you can't see online. Um, they're not officially released, so it's kind of a special um, screening here that I'm allowing you guys to see this. Um, Soup for My Brother has been in seven film festivals so far. It's screened in New York City, Toronto, Chicago. It was in Los Angeles last week, or this past weekend. And then um, two, last week it was also in Liverpool, England. So um, I'm just going to set this up as it's, a, it's about a 10 minute film. It stars my dad or features my dad. It's a documentary. Um, it's about brotherly love, uh, tradition and loss. Another great film, Terry. Oh, no. I kind of feel like the story, um, people ask me like, how do you come up with the ideas for your films? and Sometimes when, we're, when I'm done with the process or the, uh, the team that I work with, by the time we're done, we feel like the story kind of chose us um, instead of the other way around. Now, obviously, there was a deeper meaning than uh, just your dad making the soup for his brother. Um, mm -hmm. What is that deeper meaning? Because, um, you know, like I said, this film has um, gotten into many film festivals, not just native-specific um, f film festivals, but mainstream film festivals. And I think there's something about it that everybody kind of, you know, when you tell a story, you know, you don't want to tell a story about 
it's me, 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 I, I, I. You want to be able to tell a story that who, who your audience is, is able to uh, relate to. And I think with what happened with um, my dad's brother, everybody goes through that sort of cycle. Everything goes through a cycle. A story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And, you know, unfortunately, or poetically said, uh, life has, this, has a beginning, and middle, and end as well. So it's just a matter of how we commemorate it. And what I think what makes it unique to non-Native people is they, they, they sometimes they see us and they know us, but sometimes they don't know a lot about us. And that's where I kind of see with filmmaking as a, as a vehicle in order to, um, to, allow, um, to allow others to see us um, as they probably normally don't get that opportunity. Now I know that you've um, had a career change um, mm -hmm. and you've had a previous career. What mm -hmm. made you decide to pursue a film career? Um, I, I gave a lot of credit to growing up, in, in, especially when I was here in, in um, Gowanda. Um, the Seneca Nation used to have enrichment programs and I was really um, um, enamored with photography. I love to be able to capture a moment like in time. I, I guess I, I wanted to be a filmmaker, but I never felt like I was good enough. But then when, you, when I used to watch things on TV, um, those weren't, they weren't, they tended not to be native people. They tended to be diff other people's stories. So I felt like maybe filmmaking wasn't for me. Um, and as I got older, I just sort of realized that um, maybe, maybe it can be, a, maybe I can be a, a storyteller. Maybe I can create those films or those stories that that don't exist so um, I applied to Syracuse University uh, four years ago I got accepted into their film program and um, during those four years I, I studied in Italy for two summers I studied in the Czech Republic um, I did a semester in Los Angeles California um, but in the end I graduated in May of this year I graduated Kuma Sum Laude which is uh, the highest like highest honor roll that you can have. Um, I was also valedictorian of my school. Syracuse has 12 different like schools. So the School of Visual and Performing Arts out of 500 students, I was first. Um, it wasn't by design. I didn't try to be number one. I think it's just that I loved um, the learning process of filmmaking that um, with making films maybe like Give and Take and Soup for My Brother, uh, the faculty you know, probably recognize my accomplishments. Uh, one last quick question. Mm -hmm. um, you've mentioned that your films have been premiered um, around the world. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Who is probably the most famous person or celebrity you've had interaction with? Oh, uh, that's a good question. I've seen people in the streets. I mean, I've, I've seen Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, wait. Okay, this will do it. Uh, last year when I was studying at the Los Angeles uh, um, Syracuse campus, we actually were able to be f seat fillers at the American Music Awards. So I was in the audience literally you know, 10 rows in the audience and I got to see Justin Bieber and, and Megan Trainor and The Weeknd. Like they were all sitting like rows ahead of me, but I, they didn't allow us our cell phones to come in, so I couldn't like transmit that look who I'm sitting next to or look who's near me um, but yeah that those are the most famous uh, people I think um, so in the end uh, just to close up I hope you guys enjoyed the film um, we live in a, a digital age now when I came to you uh, was at Gowanda everything was uh, you know you used real film to take photos you did uh, you know there was videotape to film but now everything's digital so everybody can be a storyteller I mean we have YouTube you can make your own movies um, but if you, any of you are interested in seeing more of my films, um, tonight I will be at the Seneca Nation Library. Um, Mary, maybe we'll have some information if you want to um, get the details on that. It's from 5 to 7 p.m. I will be rescreening these, these films along with two other films. And serving some corn soup. Yes, roast corn soup. <laughs> <laughs> now we Terry. Um, we're honored to have had you here. Um, we hope you'll come back. I'd be happy to come back. So. Great. All right. Yeah. Yeah.